Do you always have your guards up? Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. Today I wanna to dive deeper into the masculine shield in women. And I have a video I did recently about how the masculine shield can affect women in body image. It was a very popular video. I had a lot of great feedback on that video. So I wanted to do another video diving into the masculine shield a little bit deeper. If you wanna know about how the masculine shield shows up in women when it comes to things like weight gain and obsession with plastic surgery. I dive into that much deeper in the original video, which I'll link to this one. You can check that out. It's a very popular video and a lot of really amazing feedback from women on that video. So I want to dive into a few other ways that the masculine shield can show up in women that isn't just things like in your physical body. Some of these things have a little bit to do with physical body, but in some other ways in our life. And I also want to have a little bit into more of like what the masculine shield actually is. So if you're new to my content, just a brief summary of masculine feminine energies. Masculine feminine energies are energies live within all of us. We all contain both energies, but we all have a core energy that's the one we're most ourselves in. For most women, they will be feminine at their core. And for most men, they'll be masculine at their core. What that means is that for most women, they will operate at their best in their feminine energy, but it is healthy to have a connection to your masculine energy. For most men, it is the healthiest for you to be in your masculine energy most of the time, but also be able to tap into your feminine energy. Those energies can be wounded or healed, and that is that anybody can have wounded masculine or wounded feminine energies. And there are a lot of aspects to the masculine shield that actually tie into a woman having very wounded masculine or very wounded feminine energies. And I have a lot of videos diving into masculine masculine feminine energy wounding on my channel if you want to dive into that a little bit more. Essentially what a masculine shield in women is, is that the masculine, like masculine energy, and this is not like men, but this is the energy of the masculine, like masculine energy, is very protective. Anytime we as humans feel like we need to protect ourselves, we tend to enact our masculine energy. That's a normal, healthy, biological function that we all experience. However, because women are most themselves typically when they are connected to their feminine energy, if they find themselves having to live their whole life in their masculine energy to protect themselves, eventually that's gonna wear on them. For one, I mean, women are just not gonna be their best selves because they're gonna lose a connection to their feminine energy, which for women, that's our power, is our feminine energy. In fact, the masculine shield actually oftentimes gives women a false sense of power. Sometimes it can give them temporary protection, but generally speaking, it cuts women off from their true feminine power. It also keeps women's nervous systems very tense because oftentimes when you're in that, masculine shield or you have that masculine protection up all the time it puts you in like a fight flight freeze or fawn kind of a, a reaction right which i've talked about this in other videos for men that fight or flight reaction always being in fight or flight is actually more attuned to men's nervous systems than it is to women that doesn't mean that women don't have that and women absolutely can have those responses they're healthy responses if you need to be in fight or flight or something like those are are healthy biological safety mechanisms in, in humans. However, women are not designed to always be in fight or flight all the time. And usually women that are put in a situation where they're constantly in fight or flight, you're gonna see a lot of damage to their nervous systems. You're gonna start to see a lot of physical and mental health illnesses as a result of that. I actually believe that a lot of issues that we're seeing in women, particularly like hormonal and reproductive issues, can be tied to women consistently being in fight or flight all the time, which is very much tied to having a masculine shield up, of feeling like you have to protect yourself all the time. So being in that constant need to protect yourself and in that masculine energy is not a healthy place for women to be in. However, it's not always wrong, and I want to make this very clear in the beginning, that having a connection to your masculine energy as a woman is not wrong, and sometimes it's necessary. The example that I like to use is say you're a woman and you have to walk to your car in a, you know, questionable neighborhood, right? Or really, as women, any neighborhood, really. But, like, you have to walk to your car by yourself, like that is not the time when you are going to fully embody your feminine energy. Because your feminine energy is about the senses, sensuality, flow. That's probably not the time when you're gonna be like, feeling into your hips and you're gonna be like taking in the senses and just looking at nature and looking at the environment and stuff like that. Like that's very much your feminine energy is like being in flow, being a part of the world and a part of nature. Partly because 
that's very magnetic. And probably in this particular instance, you're not gonna wanna be attracting in a lot of attention. That's probably not gonna feel safe for you. And you also are not gonna want to be sinking into the flow of the universe because you're gonna need some kind of protection. So like that is the time when you would enact your masculine energy, which masculine energy, and again, this is not about men or women, this is about masculine and feminine. Your masculine energy is very directional. It's very point A to point B. It's very focused. It's, it's very disciplined it's very directional so this is the time when for your own safety you would go from point A to point B you're not gonna be all like like oh look at how pretty the Sun is or you know like oh I'm feeling so good in this skirt it makes me feel so good because that's probably not the energy that's called for in that moment in that moment of you need to safely get from point A to point B you're probably going to enact your masculine energy which is going to be very directional and very focused that's healthy however if you have to live your whole life, which unfortunately many women do today, as if you're walking through a bad neighborhood, that's gonna start to wear on you. And you're gonna start to build this shield around you that is going to kind of keep you separate from the outside world. It's gonna keep you very closed off. And that's what we call the masculine shield. So again, when I talk about the masculine shield and how it shows up in women, I don't want women to think that it's a bad thing for you to enact your masculine energy at times when you need to protect yourself. It's absolutely acceptable, it's, it's healthy, and in some cases it may be the best thing to do. However, what I would like to encourage women to do is not feel like they have to live their whole life having to protect themselves all the time. Now I understand that, you know, we're all in different places in our lives and different situations and different circumstances. And if you are a woman who is in a situation where you are constantly unsafe, I would encourage you in whatever way that you need to, to try to take the steps to becoming safe or to try to get yourself to safety. Obviously every circumstance is different, but I would encourage you to try to take the steps to find a way to get yourself safe. And, and I understand that that might look different for different people and I can't sit here and tell everybody how to do that because everybody's individual situation is what it is and stuff. So if you are a woman who's feeling like you actually are in a constant unsafe environment and things are constantly unsafe for you, I highly encourage you to try to get out of that situation in the safest way possible because you're worth it. And I want you to know that you're worth it. If you perceive everything as unsafe but reality is it's not really that way you probably need to get some help whether it's work with you know a therapist or coach or something if you're unable to feel safety in the body that's more advanced than what i'm going to get into in this video this video is really about awareness i also want to make a note that none of the things i'm about to talk about in this video or in any of my other videos really are about judgment or shame if you see yourself in any of these things that i'm going to talk about this is not about like judging yourself or being mad at yourself or shaming yourself for doing these things most of the things that we do in our life are because we believe in that moment it makes us safe. Whether it really does or whether it doesn't, we're doing these things because we believe it's the right thing to do at the time. My belief and my reason behind this content is I just want people to be more aware of these things. Because I think oftentimes we do these things very unconsciously and we don't realize we're doing them, we don't realize why we're doing them. And if we aren't conscious of the behavior and the reason why, we really can't change the behavior. And so that's why I kind of want to take a look at some of these ways that the masculine shield can show up in your life, not to judge or shame anybody for doing any of these things, but just so that maybe some of us can be more aware of some of these patterns that we're in that may not be serving us. Because the reality is if you're always in your masculine shield, if you're always in this protective mode, if you always feel like you have to have a guard up, yes, you can shut yourself off from unsafe things in your environment, but you also are going to shut yourself down to good things coming in. You're going to shut yourself down from, you know, great connections with friends or family, or maybe, you know, shut things down with loved ones in your life or calling in loved ones, whether that be romantic relationships or whether that be friendships. If you constantly have a guard up, you're going to block out the good things in your life as well as the bad things. Having to protect yourself at times is definitely a good thing. We all need to be able to do that. However, if you're constantly guarding yourself from everything in the outside world, you're blocking yourself off from like 
beautiful good things from love from connection that so many of us are really craving in society today and again none of the things i talk about in this video are like for pleasing men or just to get a man or anything if you are desiring a romantic relationship great but none of these things are really designed to get a relationship or to keep a relationship that could be a result of working on some of these things but in general i want people to do this because you know most of us want more love in our lives most of us want more connection and community as humans particularly as feminine beings as most women we thrive on that we thrive on connection and community and if we keep ourselves guarded all the time we can block ourselves from like the good things as well as the bad and i also want to make a note and i talked about this in some of my videos about being a recovering pick me girl and things if you're new to my content i don't subscribe to the like stereotypical idea of like what's masculine and what's feminine when i talk about connecting to your feminine energy I'm not talking about it like looking a certain way or that it has to fit a certain mold or that it has to to have a certain image. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you have to like dress a certain way or have certain hobbies or have certain activities or you need to, you know, act a certain way or like fit some kind of like performative or stereotypical femininity. That's not where I'm coming from at all. So if you are somebody who's like a natural tomboy or something like that or you're into things that are not considered like really girly that has nothing to do with this and and you can still embody your feminine energy because that's your birthright as women our feminine energy is our birthright you can still embody those things and have it look any way that you want this is not about trying to be something that you're not this is about trying to reclaim who you are as as a as a feminine cord being i also have a really exciting announcement that i'm going to make a little bit later in the video that i'm really excited about so be sure you stay tuned for that so as i talked about in my last video i talked a little bit about how the masculine shield can show up in women who sort of unconsciously start gaining weight as a protective shield around them and also women who start surgically altering their bodies to kind of objectify themselves so that they kind of convince themselves that like they're holding the power if men objectify them and i dive into that whole concept in the other video so i'm not going to touch on that but one of the most common comments that i got on that video were the number of women who talked about dressing very frumpy or very tomboyish in order to detract attention from them when it came to men now look if your style is just more casual and tomboyish and stuff and that's how you want to dress cool i'm not going to sit here and tell you that you have to dress more sexy or more girly or anything like i want women to express themselves in fashion the way they feel comfortable with however if you are finding yourself constantly using layers of clothing or constantly using ill-fitting clothing or things like that as a like protective shield around you, you're really depriving yourself of wearing things that make you feel good. And I understand that there are gonna be situations where you may not wanna dress like your most feminine or your most like va va voom or something like that, obviously. However, wearing things that make you feel good that you can look in the mirror and say, I feel good in this or I look good in this, it's just, it's such a beautiful gift to yourself. I just, I find it heartbreaking that women don't allow that for themselves. And again, that doesn't mean that you have to be really sexy because sometimes that might be appropriate and sometimes it might not be. But oftentimes when we're hiding under layers of clothing or we're hiding under ill-fitting clothing because we feel like we don't want to be seen or we don't want to be seen a certain way, we're just, we're taking away such a beautiful part of our life, which is just to put on something that makes us feel good about ourselves ourselves and I think everybody deserves that and you know look I spent the majority of my adult life in a male-dominated field I was in stand-up comedy for many many years and I definitely was guilty of wearing a lot of extra layers which in summertime was miserable and having to be very covered up because I needed people to hear what I was saying and I oftentimes felt like if I dressed not even sexy but just in anything that showed any cleavage or anything like people just did not listen to what I had to say and I understand how frustrating that can be so I understand the desire for women to feel like they have to hide everything about themselves but at the end of the day there are options of clothing that you can wear that don't have to be like overtly sexy but can still make you feel like you look good or feel good like there are i mean i know there's a whole buzz right now around like dressing modestly or not dressing modestly and that's and per i think that's personal choice you know whether whether you want to dress modest or you don't but i actually remember watching 
a it was some kind of a dating thing or something with and i don't remember what the concept was it had something to do with like very religious people that were dating and like modesty and like women dressing in certain cultures and i remember there was this woman who was very much because of her religious background was all about modesty and stuff and i remember like her going out on this date and her outfit while yes she was completely covered from like head to toe she looked so chic and like so stylish i was like i mean i'm not i'm not somebody who dresses particularly for modesty or whatever i'll wear low cut tops like i'm not particularly religious but i was just like i would wear her whole outfit like it was so chic and it looked so stunning so like even if you want to be more covered you can still look phenomenal if you wear the right colors for you if you wear like if things just fit you well and as somebody, I mean, I've talked about this in other videos, my weight has gone up and down. I have been like every dress size <laughs> all across the map. And there have definitely been times in my life when I thought dressing like frumpier or dressing in like baggier clothing would make me feel smaller or would hide my body. And I always found that that usually made me feel worse. And I think sometimes as women, when we don't wear things that make us feel good, I think it can show up in other areas of our life. I've noticed that when I start dressing in things that really don't make me feel good, because I'm like, I just don't care, it's very often tied to me having sort of like depression or issues in other areas of my life. So again, like dress how you want, dress in a way that makes you feel good. But I would just encourage you to really start looking into wearing things that make you feel good. You don't have to go crazy into, you know, wearing things that are super sexual unless you want to, totally up to you. Wearing things that make you feel good is like a gift to yourself. And I understand that it can feel a little unsafe at times. So maybe trying to slowly work that into your wardrobe, slowly trying to wear things that just fit you a little bit better, realizing as you do it that you are safe, that you have your own back, like working towards that I think can be really helpful because honestly, I just, I think that wearing things that make you feel good, I think everybody's worthy of that, to be honest with you. So but that is one of the ways that it shows up. Now there's the opposite extreme. And I think you'll notice that in a lot of these examples, there's usually the two extremes, right? Like a lot of this stuff is extreme. So in the same way that sometimes women putting on weight unconsciously can be a way of protecting them from the outside world, that's very similar to women wearing very loose fitting clothing as kind of like a protective shield or like lots of layers or something to keep them covered up. It's like a protection. On the flip side, like I mentioned in the other video, you know, women who are getting like massive plastic surgeries and kind of making themselves into a plastic doll because it objectifies them or they're objectifying themselves. So it's kind of like a protection of like, well, if I objectify myself before I get objectified, they give themselves a false sense of power. There is also the masculine protective shield of of a woman who goes kind of like the opposite way of dressing in that they dress so sexual like so over the top sexual and I'm not talking about women who just like want to wear something that makes them feel good and makes them feel sexy and things like that I'm not trying to promote modesty culture or anything I think that's a personal choice everyone she needs to make for themselves but the women who are dressing in a way that is like so overtly sexual like you are going to like the supermarket dressed as if you just went on stage at a strip club like that kind of extreme in that situation that often is a protective shield again very similar to the obsessive plastic surgery of this way of like well if i make myself into a sex object it gives some women a false sense of empowerment of like i'm objectifying myself before somebody else objectifies me and that's really a protective shield i know it's counterintuitive because it's almost like you're letting go of your whole shield it's like you're literally like leaving yourself exposed so I realize it's counterintuitive to think of that as being a shield but it often is because it's like if you lead with your body if you lead with your sexuality if that's all you show up to the table with it's kind of like a way of falsely convincing yourself that if someone sexualizes you that you had the power and you made the decision. It's still a protective shield and it's still not a healthy place to be in. I talked a little bit about this in my video about, I think it was like being an Instagram model and things like that, is oftentimes it's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. In the same way, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy for like, like some of these podcast bros that like go on dating sites 
where women are specifically looking for wealthy men and these guys will go on there and then they'll be like oh see all women are gold diggers it's like well no you put yourself in a situation where gold diggers are going to go and then you just made the assumption that all women are gold diggers based on your environment or I just heard one recently where this guy was like it's like a man going to a strip club and being like why do all women shake their ass for money it's like well not all women do but you put yourself in an environment where that's where those women go and in the same situation if you were a woman who maybe is overly sexualizing yourself and I'm not talking about a woman who just like embraces her sexuality or things like that I have other videos talking about that. I honor that. I think more women need to embrace their own sexuality, but I'm talking about women who basically sexually objectify themselves. When they attract in very lecherous men, it reinforces that limiting belief that most women have that, okay, all men are just lecherous creeps. When at the end of the day, you unconsciously attracted the lecherous creeps to you and then perceived that that's how all men were. I'm not saying there aren't a lot of men who are lecherous creeps, unfortunately. And I'm not saying that, you know, women just living their lives don't attract lecherous creeps. It absolutely happens. But if you are a woman who now conducts your life so that you specifically draw in lecherous creeps, it's confirmation bias. Like you're basically proving to yourself that men are what you've already perceived them to be when in reality you're putting yourself in situations where those are the men that you're going to attract to a certain extent you would think that that wouldn't make a woman feel safe and it in reality it doesn't however and i dive into this deeper in my video i have a video about limiting beliefs and things like that sometimes if we have a belief in our mind even if it's an unsafe belief, like say we believe that men are unsafe, if we specifically attract in a man that's unsafe, that belief is confirmed. So our ego is just sort of like, oh, so things are the way that I thought they were. You don't want men to be unsafe, but your ego on some level kind of wants the proof that your belief is true. That's way deeper than I'm gonna get into in this video. Again, I have a video talking about limiting beliefs and stuff that goes into that much deeper, but again, I know some of these things don't necessarily make sense logically when you look at them however there's a lot of human behavior that doesn't really line up logically I think the more we can kind of understand that the more we can actually try to put ourselves in situations that are safer so I realized that it is a little counterintuitive for women to be presenting themselves in a very like vulnerable way of being very over sexualized however for some women that will give them a sort of like false sense of safety. Now that's wardrobe and obviously I mentioned, you know, like body image and stuff in my other video. Things like hair and makeup can also fall into this category and I wanna be very careful when I talk about this because I know people are gonna be like, well you color your hair and you wear makeup and things like that. Yes, I love, I love playing with my hair, I love makeup, I love all that stuff. And I'm not here to discourage anybody from loving that stuff too or if it's not your thing and you don't wanna do anything to your hair and you don't wanna wear makeup or whatever, like no judgment whatsoever. I think there are like healthy and unhealthy reasons for playing with your appearance. I mean, I love makeup, but to be honest with you, I have been in times in my life where I have used makeup as a protective shield. And there are times in my life where I've used makeup as like a fun thing to do for artistic expression. So I've experienced both. So I understand that there are different reasons why women do choose to wear makeup. Like for me in my younger years, makeup was absolutely like a protective shield it was a it was a cover-up really i mean i wore a lot of cover-up it was a way of like covering my face for the world and like keeping they call it like war paint it's like your way of like going out into the world with like a protection over you and in my younger years i definitely did that i actually went through a phase for a while where i just didn't wear any makeup at all one day i kind of woke up and was like you know i miss wearing makeup and i started wearing it again and then i ended up beauty blogging and stuff which was if you're if you've been following my channel for a while you know i got my start as a beauty blogger but like now I, I wear makeup because I like playing with makeup. I wear it more on camera. I have fun when I do my makeup for the cameras and stuff, but I don't feel a need to wear it all the time. I mean, I've done a lot of makeup tutorials where my face has been completely bare before I did my makeup and stuff. So like, I don't have any problem being seen without makeup on. I wear it some days, I don't wear it other days. When I do wear it, it's because like I have fun playing with makeup and sometimes I like to experiment. I actually did an experiment with my <laughs> eyeshadow today and like, liner and stuff and i think it looks okay on camera i'm thinking but like up, up close i don't really know if it worked all that well but anyway but i like playing with makeup i do and i think you know if you like playing with makeup or you don't like makeup at all like i think it's totally your choice 
However, I do think it is safe to ask yourself, like, why do you wear makeup? Are you wearing it because you feel like you need to hide from the world? Or are you wearing it because you just wanna have fun and, and you know, play around with artistic expression? And there's no judgments either way, but if you are wearing it because you feel like you need to protect yourself from the world, that just might be an area of your life that you wanna look at, you know what I mean? And that doesn't mean that you have to give it up or you have to stop wearing it or anything like that. It's totally your choice. But it just might be a sign that there might be some stuff that you might need to work on within yourself when it comes to that. And again, I, this isn't about judging anybody. I think sometimes like, you know, doing kinda like crazy wild things with your hair. Again, sometimes it's artistic expression, but sometimes it's a way of kinda keeping yourself guarded from the world and no judgment no shame but i just i think sometimes it's it's safe to look at that and really like ask yourself like hey am i doing this because i really feel like this is this is me and this is fun and this is my creative expression i think it's also similar to i see this a lot with like guys now are really hung up on like women with tattoos and stuff and like i don't have any tattoos but i'm very neutral on them like you have them you don't have them whatever i don't really care but you know people can oftentimes get a lot of tattoos as a protective shield as a way of kind of like you know hiding their body and things like that some people get them because they want to show off certain things or they believe it's artistic expression none of these things are right or wrong necessarily but at the end of the day i think it's i just think it's healthy to sort of ask yourself like hey am i doing this because this is enhancing my life am i doing this because this makes me feel good and this makes me feel full and excited and feel really great or am I doing this because I feel awful and I'm doing these things to kind of keep myself feeling awful or keep myself guarded or to keep myself protected or hidden away from the world. I just think I just think these things are really important to kind of look at, just kind of get to know yourself. I'm I'm just a really big advocate of self-awareness. Another really common one and this is kind of the last thing I'm going to touch on when it comes to kind of like physical appearance, but another really common one is posture. <laughs> and you know, some of this is a little bit tied to body image and things like that, but this was something I didn't mention in the original video that I wanted to talk about. Posture is a big thing. This has been a huge thing for me. I, I've i dealt with this for a long time. Part of this is because for me, I'm very top heavy, but I don't think you have to be top heavy just to experience this. But you know, I have a lot of extra weight on me. So I have definitely tended to hunch over. And a lot of this is like, let me just close down now in our world today we do tend to be very like hunched over our phones hunched over things so bad posture is like rampant across the board but i do think in women oftentimes the posture is a way of shutting down and not being seen and this can happen you know for a lot of different reasons but it keeps us closed off if you think about it like this is literally shutting down our heart okay so it's literally a guard for like shutting down our heart. When somebody's like like this, they're not necessarily giving off an energy of like, I'm open to life, love, connection. It's literally an indication that they're closed off to things around them. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Again, like, you know, being hunched over like a computer or your phone or things like that or whatever can definitely contribute to that. I, I think anytime women are self-conscious about their chest size i think this can happen for i know for me it happens at larger sizes because it's really easy because gravity kind of takes over but i think anytime women are self-conscious about their chest size at all whether it be big or small or let's face it most women in some way feel self-conscious about their chest size you know regardless of it in reality like most women tend to have very complicated relationships with their chest area and as a result of that a lot of women shut down and it really contributes to terrible posture and it keeps you closed off it also encourages like really tight muscles and it it just it shuts you down from the rest of the world because again when you're when you're like this and you're hunched over it's not really giving off the energy that you are like open to connection and open to community and love and the world and things like that that's why i actually have a really exciting announcement for me i know i've had a very complicated relationship with my chest over the years and i know so many women have for me doing breast massages has been life-changing and i've been working on a course it's kind of like a mini course to teach women how to give themselves a breast massage and it really is a beautiful practice for helping you connect to your breasts, helping you love your breasts. I don't know how much I can say breasts in this video before YouTube gets upset with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna call this the chest for now. I don't know exactly how I'm going to be able to put the title of the course in the description box. I will put 
a link to the course in the description box, but I might have to change the title. The social media algorithm does not like references to women's bodies, even though this is like a completely non-sexual thing. I mean, I could go down like a whole rant about the fact that because social media is so weird about women's chest area, which is a completely natural part of life. I mean, it literally is life-giving, like it can feed new life and things like that. But because like, you know, corn culture and stuff has basically made our chest area to be solely seen as sexual. So many women get so cut off from their chest area so they don't actually participate in, you know, regular chest checks or the health of their chest area. Again, we get so closed off, we get so shut down. We oftentimes, you know, we're very like oftentimes ill-fitting or tight-fitting, you know, bras that don't let the lymph flow circulate and things like that. Like it puts women's health at so much risk because the chest area becomes so like sexualized that it has to get suppressed and women become so disconnected from it. Again, I could go off on that subject all day. I'm not gonna go into that because it's not the point of the video. However, doing chest massages is so beautiful. And that's actually when you go get a massage, that's an area that doesn't tend to get focused on because it is such a personal area, which is why I really love doing self massages in that area because it literally is a way of sending an area of your body love that we often send a lot of hate and judgment towards. And there's so many benefits to doing chest massages for women. I set up this course because I really wanted to go into detail about some of the benefits of it, a way to do it, and I actually have like three different examples of ways that you can incorporate chest massage into your life. I have like a little tutorial that will give you a few exercises that you can do daily as like a really quick way of just like showing your body and showing your chest area a little bit of love throughout the day that will help you just like open your heart release some of the muscles it will help like lymphatic drainage and stuff and it just helps you show an area of your body love that may not get enough love it's a great thing to do either in the shower as just like a quick practice or like at the end of the day when you take your bra off and you just want to kind of like get everything flowing again really quick easy daily practice and then i also have a guided practice that's sort of like maybe like a weekly practice and then a longer like massage and meditation that you can do whenever you need to and you need like a real deep connection to your chest area and you really want to like loosen up the muscles and you really want to like open your heart there's so many benefits to that and again it doesn't mean that you have to walk around you know with everything hanging out all the time and stuff because there's times when that may not be appropriate but if you always live your life so hunched over, so closed down, and just like shut down to everything, you're shutting yourself down to the good things in life as well as the dangerous things. And I want women to learn to open up and be able to let the good things in their life and be able to accept love, receive love, to receive pleasure and joy and all the great things in life. Because as feminine beings, that's your birthright. So. I highly encourage you to check out this course. I'm really excited about it. I really wanted to focus on like just a workshop for women who really want to focus on sending love for this area. It's great for women of any size. I mean, it, you can't be too big to do this because frankly, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And even if you're you know you have a smaller chest it's really great to connect you know because you know we tend to be self-conscious about our chest size regardless of the size so it's really great for anybody if you have implants you can do this practice i would just be careful i don't know a ton about implants and how they work so that's not really my area of expertise but i do know that oftentimes when you have implants you can feel very disconnected from your chest area so doing chest massage can help that as well so that you don't feel quite as disconnected it's not necessarily going to change your chest size however i do notice and i have also heard other women talk about the fact that they really do feel like they feel like perkier and they feel more youthful and things like that like they just feel a much better connection to their chest area they feel like their chest area looks better and i think part of that is because oftentimes areas in our body that we don't send love to can oftentimes feel neglected and once you start sending love to that area it can start feeling like rejuvenated again so i found these chest massages to be absolutely life-changing so i really wanted to share some of these practices with you so i will leave a link in the description box below i'll probably have to link it in a way that's very like algorithm appropriate unfortunately because of the world we live in and how much we shame women's bodies but but yeah i'll leave a link below for you to check out i tried to make it an affordable price so that 
that hopefully as many people as possible can try this out because it's been so life-changing for me and I really wanted to share it with you. So if you do find that you're having a very complicated relationship with your chest area, it could be something as severe as childhood trauma or it could be something as natural as maybe you gave birth and you were breastfeeding and kind of felt like your your chest wasn't really your own anymore because you were using it for a more functional reason. It could be because you feel like your chest area is numb and you want to try to loosen it up for more sensation and pleasure in your life. Or it may just be because you've had some body image issues, which most of us have as women. You know, this course is beneficial for all of those things. Chest massage is has just been life-changing for me and I really wanted to share it with you. So doing self-massage and opening your heart space is a really beautiful way of helping you kind of like soften that masculine shield that we often put up as women because we feel like we need to protect ourselves. Because at the end of the day, is is this, is hunching over, is keeping yourself close, is that really keeping you that much safer from the rest of the world? Probably not. It might detract a little bit of attention temporarily, but you're also going to shut yourself off to a lot of good things in your life that, you know, you're worthy of. So I highly encourage you to check out the course. Link is in the description box below. And if you do check out the course and you do enjoy it, have any breakthroughs or anything, please let me know, share it on social media and stuff so that more people can hear about this. And, you know, I really want to hear about any breakthroughs or any, you know, positive experiences that you have. So those were some of the physical ways that the masculine shield can show up in women. This is obviously not an exhaustive list, but there are a few like personality ways. There's so many different ways that this can show up, but these are just a few that I think are very common. Maybe some of this might spark something with you to be like, oh, that's why I do this. Again, no judgment, no shame. This is just about awareness. I have other videos talking about female sexuality and and I have requests to do more. So I'm going to be doing more videos about female sexuality. So I'm not going to dive into this topic too much. However, similar to a lot of these other things, when you get into the extremes, oftentimes that becomes a shield. So for some women, their masculine shield can show up in completely cutting themselves off from any expression of sexuality, which is going to cut you off from, uh, I mean, sexuality is creativity, it's sensuality, it's it's pleasure, it's joy. So if you completely cut yourself off from any sexuality or your own feminine sexuality, you're really doing yourself a disservice. This does not mean that you should be sharing your body with everybody. I am not encouraging promiscuity at all. I don't encourage promiscuity because frankly, I don't think promiscuity is healthy. I don't think that, I mean, I'm, I'm usually of the belief that if you're a woman who's sleeping with a lot of men, you are absolutely sleeping with men that don't deserve access to your body because I don't believe that most women are gonna run into <laughs> that many men in their life that actually deserve access to a woman's body. So I don't encourage promiscuity. And speaking of that, <laughs> As we talked about with some other things, there is the extreme, which should be no surprise, considering the wardrobe extremes or the body image extremes. You know, one extreme as far as a masculine shield can be shutting yourself completely off from your sexuality, which is doing yourself a disservice, but also over-sexualizing yourself. When I talk about overly sexualizing yourself, what I mean is you're not really connecting to your true feminine sexuality. You typically are making yourself into an object for male validation, which like I mentioned earlier, really ties into the idea of like you making yourself into a sex object which gives you a false sense of empowerment it's not really empowerment but it gives you a false sense of that of like well if i objectify myself first before men objectify me then you convince yourself you have the power it's a false sense of empowerment i realize it's very counterintuitive but oftentimes human behavior isn't logical sometimes we give ourselves these false beliefs and these like false senses of security that aren't real because for a lot of reasons, it could be childhood trauma. There's so many different reasons why these things can play out this way. So in many women, the masculine shield can show up in a woman's sexuality in either extreme, whether it be completely cut off from her true sexual energy or whether it be her intentionally exploiting her sexual energy. Neither one is really gonna be healthy. As women, it's really important to have a like a healthy connection with your true feminine sexuality. That's the ideal. So if you're finding yourself shut off completely or you're finding yourself intentionally exploiting it, those are usually protective shields. And I have a lot of other videos talking about feminine sexuality and I'm gonna be doing more, so I'm not gonna dive into this much deeper, but that's just one to be aware of. It's a very common way in our society that the masculine shield tends to show up in women. And I've said this a million times before, and I will say this probably forever, that it's my belief that if we teach women 
that there's so much power in our feminine bodies, in our sexuality. We will understand the importance of being very selective over who we share our bodies and who we share that sexuality with. And it's so important to make sure that a man is worthy of that before we share that with him. And frankly, if you live that way, you cannot be promiscuous because there are just not gonna be that many men in the world that are gonna fit that description. That goes into another protective shield, which is women's standards. Now, I wanna make it very clear, and I've said this a lot in other videos, but I'll make this very clear. I am all for women having high standards. I think women having very high standards is crucial. I think it's crucial for society. I think it's crucial for you know men and women in general. I think it's crucial for families. There's so many reasons why women having high standards, it solves so many problems in society because then women are not mating with men who have no business being husbands and fathers. It is so important for women to keep high standards and to expect men to reach those standards. If men don't wanna reach those standards, you move on because at the end of the day, men who don't wanna reach women's high standards have no business getting into relationships, sleeping with women, having kids with women, you know, raising families with women. Like we need women to keep our standards high so that we don't have a whole bunch of losers out there bothering the next generation of people, which unfortunately is a situation that we're in right now. So women having high standards is essential. And I, I wanna emphasize this because I don't want what I'm about to say to take away from this. However, sometimes women can use standards as a protective shield to keep them cut off from love, people, relationships, things like that. That's not to say that women should not keep their standards high. One of the big things I emphasize is, and I have other videos going to this in detail, but it's so important for women to get to the root of what they truly desire in a standard. So like, for example, if you are a woman who's looking for a provider, wonderful, but you need to make sure that you're not just chasing wealthy men because just because a man has the means to provide for you doesn't mean he has the desire to be a provider. So if you just go around chasing wealthy men and only date wealthy men, you may or may not find a man who's a provider because you're not actually searching for the root of what you want, which is a provider. Now granted, if a man does not have the means to provide for you, even if he has the desire, that's not gonna work either. But you need to get to the root of what you actually desire in a partner and get really clear on your standards in order to find what it is that you're looking for. How However, there are women out there who create these long lists of standards and some of these standards get very either contradictory or superficial or things that don't really matter or don't actually fit a desire and they use that as a way to shut themselves off so that they keep a man out of their lives. That's when having standards is unhealthy. They're actually, oh my God, the movie. Did I do a film breakdown of Practical Magic? I don't think I did now that I think about it. I think that I watched that movie after I was doing film breakdowns. But if you're familiar with the film Practical Magic, Sandra Bullock's character in that movie decides she does not ever want to fall in love. So when she's a kid, she kind of sets this little spell of the criteria she wanted in a man to fall in love with him. And there were these completely unrealistic expectations of like he had to have like one blue eye and one brown eye or something. He'd have two different eye colors. His favorite shape had to be a star. I think he had to ride a horse backwards or something like that. Like all these standards that in reality didn't mean anything. She didn't need any of these things in a man. Like they didn't fulfill a desire for her, but she set these unrealistic expectations of these things that like, they don't mean anything. They, they were a way of her setting herself up so that she would never fall in love with someone. Now, obviously because it's Hollywood and because it's a movie, she ends up meeting a guy like that. But in real life, in reality, if you as a woman are setting these standards that are really not fulfilling any true desire that you have, and they really aren't standards that really matter in the long run, but you're using them as a way to protect yourself from ever letting anybody in, that's really gonna set you up for disappointment. Again, you want a man who's a protector, you want a man who's a provider. Great, wonderful. If you're like, I need a man who takes three sugars in his coffee every morning, or I need a man who his favorite movie has to be the exact same favorite movie that I have or something like that, like that's your criteria, you're probably setting yourself up for a lifetime of disappointment and you might be doing that intentionally to keep yourself from having to be in a relationship. Like that's, you know, typical like commitment phobe or something like that. Like you're, you're setting these standards that don't really mean anything and they don't really fulfill any kind of like true desire in order to 
keep yourself protected. Now that said, I believe that when you're looking for a partner, it's so important to have the same values, to have the same goals in life, to have the same vision going forward and things like that. I will say having like little things in common, you know, having similar interests and things like that, do make a relationship easier. They absolutely do. They can also give you a false sense of intimacy, unfortunately, and you can get really caught up easily in these little things that you have in common and ignore some of the big things that you don't have that you aren't on the same page about. I learned that lesson the hard way, but it is easier to be in a relationship with someone when you share the same interests, but it is so much more important when you share the same values and the same value system and you have the same you know, vision for your life and the same priorities and things like that. The other things, the compatibility as far as like, you know, similar interests and things like that, they're nice to have. And depending on how important things are in your life, like if, I don't know, say like music is a huge part of your life and you can't imagine being with someone who doesn't like the same music as you because that's a huge part of your life, then honor that. But if you're just like, oh, I want someone who'll listen to the exact same music as me because like I just want to be able to pick my music on road trips or something it's like well is that really a core value of yours maybe it is maybe it isn't but like are you expecting somebody to have the exact same interests as you as a way to protect yourself from having to be in a relationship or using that as a shield and it's just helpful to look at that i i will also make a note though because this is really important because again i've learned this lesson the hard way if you are in a relationship with someone who has different interests than you it can sometimes be a little bit challenging at times however i do think it is fair to expect that you be with a partner who respects your interests. And this goes both ways, completely both ways. And I think, you know, if you as a woman don't respect or have a serious problem with, you know, your partner's interests, you probably should question your partner, right? You know, like you really, like if he's doing something that you think is like immoral or you really, really hate something that he's doing, you might want to question whether or not you guys are truly compatible. However, if, you know, maybe he likes to watch football all day on Sunday and you just don't like football. Is that really a big deal? Like, do you have your heart set on spending your Sundays like at a flea market or something? If you do, maybe that's something that you do with your family or your girlfriends or something like that or whatever. If you really need a partner, like truly need a partner who will spend Sundays at a flea market with you, then maybe that's a true priority for you. But like, if it's really not that important and he's into his thing and you're into your thing, but you still have all the same values and things, like you have to decide where your priorities lie. That said, if he's really into watching football, say, but you really want to watch like the red carpet all day, and he makes fun of you for wanting to watch like red carpet coverage or something. I think that's a red flag. Like if somebody can't just accept the fact that somebody else has a different interest than them and just respect that they have a different interest. Like I just, I think that's a warning sign. I had to learn that lesson the hard way. It's okay to have different interests when you're in a relationship or things like that, but expecting your partner to be respectful of the fact that you may have a different interest in them and not like criticize you or insult you for having a different interest. I mean, that shows a person's character and you can have different interests in somebody, but if like, if what you value is like respect in a relationship, then you know, it that, that goes more to character than it does like, just personality. So again, not discouraging women from having high standards. You need to have very specific standards if you want. Understanding where your priorities lie as far as standards go, wonderful. But it's also fair to take a look at your standards and decide, okay, where am I maybe being too specific or not putting my priorities in the right place? So that one, gonna attract a partner that's truly what I desire, but also like, am I using some of my like less important standards to block out people in my life just for the sake of not having a relationship. Now, I would never tell you to compromise on your priority standards. I would never tell you to compromise on standards that are truly, truly important to you and actually what you desire. But what I'm talking about is like, are you setting up standards that may be unrealistic? Like if you're like, I want a smoker who doesn't smoke or like something that like you're not gonna find or getting like a really specific, like I want a man that has two different eye colors or something like, if you're getting really specific about things that are just like not not practical or things that are just like not really what you truly desire or not really something that really is going to fit what you truly desire or you're prioritizing things that may not really be priorities for you you could be using that as a protective shield and i just think it's safe to look at that never compromise on the things that are truly important to you though i want to make sure that's very clear and the last one i want to mention again this is not an exhaustive list there's lots of other ways that the masculine shield can show up this was one that i was actually just thinking about from my years of doing stand-up comedy and how i realized that because i was 
working in a male dominated field, I used to spend a lot of time, like, I did not want to be overly sexualized, so I was trying to keep myself from being overly sexualized and try to protect myself. I fell into a lot of these categories. At times I dressed, you know, very tomboyish, which I'm not criticizing tomboyish looks or anything like that. But for me, I was definitely using it as like a way to protect myself. I also found myself like completely shutting down my sexuality completely to try to avoid as much like unwanted attention as possible. But I also realized that I put myself very often into like big sister or like mom mode. Because very often I would be working with like a room full of grown men and I would basically become the babysitter. Oftentimes that like sort of mothering energy, kind of that attitude of like being the cool girl or like the big sister or something. I mean, you know, it's, it's not like I regret doing that necessarily. However, it did get exhausting after a while because I felt like I was basically like babysitting a bunch of grown men, which some of it was the environment that I was in, but it does kind of get exhausting. It definitely gave me a very jaded view of men. <sighs> which I'm still healing from and I really wish the men of the world would cooperate more with me on this because I tell you the guys on the internet are not changing that belief at all so sometimes I'm like I really want to believe there are good men in the world but like the men of the world really need to work with me on this but anyway oftentimes when women get into very like mothering energy particularly when they're dealing with grown men and again I have some videos on here talking about the difference between like being a divine mother and like mothering energy. Mothering energy tends to be very, tends to be more masculine. It's more like micromanaging, controlling, perfectionism, things like that, which can be your connection to your masculine energy, but it can also be very wounded masculine energy. It can be, again, it's more like mother energy. And if you find yourself feeling like you always have to mother grown men, that oftentimes is a protective shield. Like you become kind of the adult in a situation when you're dealing with childish men, because let's be real, man children don't feel safe. They can be fun sometimes. They can be funny and entertaining sometimes, which is why it's a very common trope in, you know, movies and TV shows and commercials and stuff, that kind of like man-child attitude. It can be very fun and entertaining for a lot of people, but it's not safe to be around. It can feel very unstable when you're dealing with a grown man who acts like a child. So oftentimes as women, we get into this very like mother mode of this very mothering energy, which is really like micromanaging, controlling, which when you're a mother and you are dealing with a child, sometimes you need to be in that energy, which is more like your masculine energy. But when you're dealing with a grown man, you should not have to be in that energy. That's not to say that when you're in a relationship or you're dealing with a grown man, that sometimes you don't need to be in like your divine mother energy, which is really very nurturing. It's very warm, it's very comforting. But that said, if you as a woman have to consistently be in your mothering energy of having to control, having to kind of like care for a grown man like he's a child, that's gonna wear down on you. If we're talking about in a romantic relationship, it's gonna kill the sexual polarity because grown women are not looking to sleep with man children. You're gonna find that very off-putting. It's gonna be, it's just, it's gonna destroy the sexual polarity. But just in everyday life, like when you're dealing with men and if you are dealing with men who are very, childlike, immature, things like that, and you feel like you have to constantly be in like that mother mode, it's gonna be exhausting for you. And oftentimes we get in that mothering mode because it's a protective shield. I understand why women enact their protective shield because many men in the world today do not feel safe. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I've talked about that in a lot of other videos. We don't have healthy masculine leadership, so we do have a lot of men who are operating in a very unhealthy masculine energy, you know, with a lot of wounding. A lot of men are in very wounded feminine energy. We have a lot of man children. Like there's a lot of unsafe men in the world unfortunately. I wish that wasn't true, but unfortunately it is. So I understand why women feel like they need to put a shield up. And I'm not saying that a woman having a masculine shield up is like always a bad thing. If you do find yourself having to always enact your masculine shield, it's going to wear on you as a woman. So I think some of these things, well, I don't judge or shame anybody for being in these things. It's going to wear down on you long term. I did have somebody ask a question actually on my last video talking about the masculine shield of like, can women feel safety if they don't have a safe man in their life? Yes, and you should be able to find safety within yourself and have a connection to your healthy masculine energy that will protect you, even if you do have a great safe man in your life, whether it be, you know, a husband, boyfriend, father, brother, or something like that. Because at the end of the day, like, 
you know, in, unless you actually have hired a bodyguard to follow you around all the time, most of these men in your life are not going to be able to walk around with you all the time as your bodyguard. So you're going to need to be able to connect to safety within your body. And actually feeling safe in your body and stuff is actually, you know, you can't really get into in just a YouTube video, but but yes, you should be able to connect to safety in your in your life in the world without a safe man in your now if you have a dangerous man in your life different story you're going to need to find a game plan to get away from that dangerous man and you know how you do that and how you go about doing that is complicated i realize i encourage you to try to take the steps get the help that you need to get out safely that's a different story if you just are single and you don't have a safe man in your life being able to find safety within yourself is is a healthy thing because again you're never going to be able to have a man that's just like with you 24 hours a day to keep you safe is it easier in life if you have a safe man in your life that can help you do some activities that you may not feel as safe doing like going to a gas station and pumping gas or something like that yeah it does make life easier but at the end of the day it's better to be able to find that safety within yourself and it's better to be able to take a look at where you have this guard up where you have this shield up when can you enact your masculine energy when it's needed to keep yourself safe but like when can you actually learn to open your heart so you're not closed off to everything in the world like these things are healthy because if you get into a mentality of like you always have your guard up because you always feel things are unsafe and you think i need a man to make me feel safe you oftentimes get into desperation this is when you oftentimes get into like a, a pick me mode which i have a lot of videos talking about being a recovering pick me you oftentimes end up choosing a man out of desperation and that's usually not the best way to choose a good man <laughs> you know you want to choose a man because he's aligned for you and not because you feel desperate or like you can't survive without a man it's the difference between neediness and desire which is like a whole other topic I have other videos on here talking about that so I highly encourage you to check out my new chest massage course which will really help with opening your heart and learning to kind of connect with your chest area feel like you can open up more to the world when it feels appropriate and when you feel safe so you can call in more love into your life whether it be romantically or just friendships or community or something i also am working on like a little master class on how to like quickly easily and affordably tap into your feminine energy if you're living your life in your masculine energy all day i'm working on that so hopefully that'll be up soon i just want to let you guys know because it's been highly highly requested and one of the best ways to heal from your masculine shield or be comfortable connecting to your feminine energy is to embrace your dark feminine energy because that's where like your power lies and that's where your your true feminine sexuality lies that's where your inner huntress lies like that's where all of your your true feminine power lies and i have the dark feminine energy guided journal which i've had a lot of people tell me they've had great breakthroughs when they've worked with this journal so if you want to check that out it's available on amazon details in the description box below along with links to my other courses master classes like my new course and all my social media accounts if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful please give it a big thumbs up and be sure you subscribe to my channel any thoughts on this video or any other video requests or anything let me know leave a comment in the comment section below any engagement on this video helps boost it in the youtube algorithm and helps get this message out to more people and i really hope that, that happens because i really think this is, this is really important information particularly for women to understand and so i really hope that this can reach as many people as possible thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you join me next time